Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Honcho Tesla Nax to CCS1 five foot adapter. And that's going to be this guy on the table. Uh, it's a little, a little blurry because it's hard to see. Um, but yeah, there she goes. Uh, this thing is pretty impressive. It has a couple flaws. We're going to talk about them. We're going to jump into an unboxing. We're going to do a test and we'll round it out with the website and some final thoughts, but definitely stick around. I'm going to roll that intro and we'll jump right into it. All right, you made it past the intro. Let's jump into the website. Then we're going to do an unboxing, a test, and we'll do some final thoughts. So right off the bat, you can see the price is $599 USD. And what's cool about this is you can actually use the informal tech discount code. So let's go ahead and test that out. You head over to your cart and you can see it's no longer $599. It's now $479. And so that is a discount of $119.80 by using the code informal tech, all one word. Now, Looking back on the website, you can see it does have right on the picture an automatic shutoff of 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that's important because what I've noticed is this cable does get a little bit warm depending on your vehicle. So if I scroll down here to the specifications, you can see that its rated voltage is a max of 1000 volts. That means if you have less voltage or up to 1000 volts, this is safe to use from that perspective. But if you check out the rated current at 250 amps, that means 100, 1000 volts at 250 amps creates 250 kilowatts of power output. Now for me personally, my vehicle doesn't charge at a thousand volts. So this is something that you're going to have to pay attention to for your vehicle. But for me, I have a Rivian and I believe that's 400 volts. And so at 400 volts, I was getting 205 kilowatts of output, which brings me around 500 amps that's flowing through this, this cable that did lead to some thermal throttling coming from the actual station. I believe at the Nax adapter section where it connects to the actual Tesla supercharger part, but that's something that you're going to have to check out depending on your vehicle. Now it did do it safely. I didn't see anything getting too hot, nothing melted. It did feel safe. So it was working. And I did get 205 kilowatts for a, a little bit, um, but then it dropped down. I ended up switching charging stalls. And so uh, once I switched charging stall, it had a chance to cool down and it picked back up at 205 um, for until the normal battery curve took into effect. And then it was charging fine because it was no longer pumping too much current through. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind, depending on your vehicle, depending on your voltage that you charge at, you may run into thermal throttling here. I didn't have any issues where it was like overheating or dangerous. It didn't feel too crazy hot to the touch, um, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, one other thing that was pointed out now, I didn't, I have no way of confirming this and it may be something that happens with all adapters. I don't know, but what I saw online was if you disconnect it at the adapter where the adapter meets the cable first, you disconnect that there is still power going from the supercharger. And this may be a communication protocol issue, uh, something like that. But Honcho has acknowledged that that is an issue and they do include some instructions now. So we'll go through what those instructions are. Um, I, I talk about that in the testing portion, but it does have an automatic shutoff. Um, it says in here. And so I think that's due to the temperature thing. So without too much further ado, I'm going to jump into the unboxing and then we'll go test it out and see how it works. Come back for some final thoughts. Stick around. Okay, jumping into the unboxing, I definitely needed a box cutter here because um, the box has just tons of tape on it. But once I was able to get it all open, you can see it is padded nicely with some foam in here. Uh, and it's a little heavy because it's a significant cable. It's very thick. Looks like we got some usual books and stuff here. Go ahead and plug and file. And uh, thank you from Honcho. Plug and file that too. And then right there you're greeted with the actual cable. Now this thing is heavier than it looks. Um, definitely substantial. Feels high quality. It's wrapped up very tightly. Definitely needed the uh, box cutter here as well. And 
be careful not to uh, actually nick the cable while you're trying to pull this uh, wrapping off. There's probably an easier way. And like I was mentioning, the handle does feel pretty pretty high quality. The button works nicely. Nothing felt loose. And this is the end that connects to the next port. And uh, it's five feet. Hopefully this will help park better. All right, so pulling up to the Tesla Supercharger right now. Looks like 1D is open. So I'm gonna pull up and see if I can get into this one without I'm going to try it with the, the extension, and we'll see how it goes. There we go. Yeah, <clears throat> that'll work. Okay. And so I got the extension all the way in here. And you can see this thing is beefy. So... We're gonna hit 1D, because that's where I'm at. And so let me attach my adapter. Oh, and that's upside down. Okay, adapter set. Pop this down, and hook it up. Let me make sure this is good to go in here. Looks like it is. And it's initializing charge. It may take a minute to start. I didn't have to park like an idiot. Awesome. Charging at 49 kilowatts so far. Just getting started. Jump straight up to 112. Okay, so let's peek inside. See how that's looking. Now I am at, what's my percentage? 26%. And I made sure to heat up the battery on the way over here, precondition it. And it's looking pretty good. So this is range based off sport mode, but it's at 205 kilowatts right now. And that's pretty good, 490 miles per hour. If I went all the way up to 85, it's gonna take me 38 minutes. All right, so we just hit a warning and the power dropped down pretty rapidly. Charging speed is reduced by the station. Now, I'm guessing that it's a temperature issue at one of the handles, probably the one where the uh, adapter connects to the actual supercharger cable. But we're still getting 355 miles per hour, so it's not like the end of the world, and we bumped up really quickly to get to where we're at. Uh, looks like we've already put in 19.2 kilowatt hours into the battery pack, so can't be mad at that. So we're down to 158 kilowatts with 22 kilowatt hours delivered after about eight minutes. You can see we still have that charging speed reduced. I'm gonna go touch the handle, see if it's pretty warm. Otherwise, I'm not really 100% sure why it would be getting reduced speed. So this piece feels nice and cool. The cable itself feels nice and cool but I can feel it getting a little warmer as I get closer to the edge. And then right here, not super hot, a little warm. So maybe that's hitting it. I'm gonna pull it out this way a little bit. Let's see, definitely can hear it kicking on in 1D, the fan. So it could be um, the actual charging stall. Cause yeah, all this feels pretty good. A little warm, but I wouldn't throttle based on that. 
Okay, so because the charging speed still shows reduced by the actual charging station, I think I'm going to move to a different one. Not that I think it's messed up or anything. It might just be like the normal curve. Uh, but just want to make sure we cross all our T's, dot our I's, make sure uh, 286 miles per hour is what we're showing with 32 minutes left. Um, been charging for 15 minutes. Honestly, I'd say we got pretty good charge back, but let's go try a different one and see if it gets any higher. So going to go disconnect it. First thing you have to do, uh, according to the uh, instructions, is we have to stop the charge. Charge stopped. I heard it click. And now I can disconnect it from the vehicle. And then after that, I can disconnect it from the piece itself. And so, I'll disconnect from here. Oh, it's a little hard with one hand. But that's good, because that's snug. So we're back at it. You can see I'm not parked like an idiot, so that feels great. And then... We'll just come over here and rehook back up. Right there. But this should be good. Hook that. Come over here. And I don't want it to be tangled. So how can I make this as smooth as possible? There we go. Okay, so now the cable's not tangled. And we can stick it in and good to go. It looks like it plug-in charged. I didn't actually tell it with the app, but I guess it has plug-in charge. And yeah, it just went straight to charging. So it's already above where it was at before. So that makes me believe it's either thermal throttling or it could have been the charging stall we were on back up to 504 miles per hour 186 so from this angle you can kind of see exactly how much that extension helps the normal adapter ends right there so there's no way I'd be making it to my actual charge port so having the extension pop up like that and go over there really helps me to not park like an idiot uh, and so that's definitely the best part about it. All right, so we hit 64% and I'm charging at 262 miles per hour. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and call it. You can see right now, it doesn't say I'm being limited by the supercharger. So that's good because that means that we're back to the normal charging curve. Uh, the truck's getting as much as it wants and we're, we're happy. I'd call this a successful test. Uh, nothing broke, nothing died. Uh, I think the switch over from the other charger was not necessary because um, the results look to be about the same. But kind of wish I would have seen this graph in the first charging uh, instance. But you can see right here, we plugged in at 51 and got 187 kilowatts. And then as our percentage went up, the rate went down. And so that feels like a pretty normal curve. I'm not an engineer working on the Rivian, so who am I to say? You know what I mean? All right, I know I said I was going to go, but I wanted to run through this graph one more time just so we can see it. And it's been chilling at 80 kilowatts for the last few percent. But okay, I think that's enough. I personally am never gonna charge above like 80% when I come to a supercharger and I don't really wanna pay for this cause I can go charge at home, so. All right, that's the Han Show Naxxus CCS1 adapter at five feet. Now this thing, final thoughts, wrapping it up. I do think it's worth a purchase, especially if you have a high voltage vehicle. If you have a vehicle that's gonna charge at a higher voltage, that thousand volts that it's rated for, then it's not gonna likely have those same temperature issues that I was experiencing, but, if you do have something that's a lower voltage, I can't say like I would recommend this personally just because it is rated at 250 amps. I was pulling 500 amps and that alone is a little bit on the sketch side, but the charging stall and the cable both acted how they should. You know, it got warm, 
it slowed down and once my normal vehicle's charging curve came in and it was no longer pulling crazy 500 amps then it was working fine and i no longer had any warnings so definitely something to keep in mind i would recommend this for those with a higher voltage vehicle with the rivian you may have to skip on this one. Uh, maybe Han Show will put out one with higher rating. Um, it, it is really thick as it is, um, and I'm sure that's to be able to put the amperage through. It didn't feel dangerous to me, um, so I'll let you use your own discretion. But if you do end up picking this up, make sure to use code Informal Tech. Also, use it on other Han Show products because you get a discount. It really does help the channel, and we greatly appreciate it. But if you made it this far, we definitely appreciate you. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you liked the video. We try to keep our tech reviews out here honest, transparent. We want to let you guys know everything that's going on. My name is Connor. This is Informal Tech. We'll see you next time. Peace.